Okay, I'm back here. I took a quick break to do some chores and let the videos upload. And of course, uh, thankfully, the reduced size of these videos, I have been able to upload them quicker, which means I'm able to do more per day. If they stay low, that means we'll have more videos per day. I'm hoping to start getting in the habit of doing um, one per day on the weekdays and maybe one video on the weekends. Depends on how things go, as I prefer to take Sundays a complete break, although that's usually the day I actually end up doing schoolwork. Life doesn't quite work out as planned. Um, so what we're going to do, because we've been doing a lot of boring stuff for the last couple of videos, we're going to work on weapon systems and stuff. So I've got this rocket launcher. I'm making this for a uh, client commission. And it's pretty much done. It's only got a few minor issues left with it, but it's not issues with the RPG itself. It's actually issues with the weapon system. So we're going to go ahead and fix those, and we're going to go ahead and add a couple other things. Now with this, I can sight the weapon, and I can unsight the weapon. But, no matter if it's sighted or unsighted, I can still fire it. I want to prevent it from firing when it's unsighted. Actually, I think it... Is it already working on that? No, it's not loaded yet. So if I'm like this state, it fires. And if I go this state, it, it'll still fire. Of course, this thing's got a 10 second reload, and I don't know if I'm going to balance that. Uh, that's more of a client's decision to make if he wants to change the balance. Um, so if we fire, it works. Blows stuff up. This is using the uh, TNT explosive code from uh, Volts Engine, so it works pretty much like the TNT. And we're getting some frame rate spikes here. Okay, that's just block being removed spikes. Nothing to worry about. It's probably also my computer just running like crap because it's been hammered on pretty hard by unit tests, hammered on by like stability testing, and I don't know how much else stuff. I've even cleaned this thing recently, but I need to go through and um, clean all the fans out and stuff. One thing I wouldn't do is I just open the case up and I vacuum out the dust just to prevent uh, buildup that it would cause shorts. But so we're going to fix this so that way this um, will only fire when sighted, which is going to be a real easy check. And we're going to close the game though because I think I'm running it in run mode because I just wanted to open it up, take a couple screenshots to do uh, some posts and stuff. And of course, last test we uh, we were messing with J unit, so the J unit stuff is still open. Uh, I did have to fix this class. I forgot to do this in the last video, uh, but it, I had to initialize the type variables on a lot of the data in here. It now loads properly. Um, I still have to check to see if everything's working, but it looks like it is working properly. The only thing I am worried about is if the Tylenity system, actually, no, the Tylenity system is a separate process. I don't, I don't need to worry about that either. So we can close all this, and we want to go look at the gun data. So we're going to go primarily be working in the Armory mod project. So I can close all this, because uh, the JSON systems are working fine. So the only thing we need to do is just to check to see if the gun is loading the is sighted check, which I think has actually been programmed. I don't know if I actually showed this off. We have a full damage system, AOE and uh, blast. This will load every single blast that is registered to volt engine. So if it, antimatter, whatever, you can put this in here, which is really cool because this means you can create really fucked up guns. Excuse the language though. Uh, so we got gun.json and we need to check the is sighted check. Now what we could do um, with this, because we have a lot of data variables that we're doing the same thing with that we were doing previously, is we could switch this to the same system the block is using. So that same annotation based injection system could be used for the guns. I'm not going to do that today because that's something I need to sit here and read through. Because I think I think there's only a couple variable types we actually could inject. Actually, there's very little in here. We would have to create processors for a lot of this stuff. Although processors would be ideal because see all these keys right down here? These are... Uh, really not dependent on anything in particular. They're booleans. Like, this is a boolean. This would be a perfect thing to do the uh, is sighted check on. Um, and it's already loaded, so the only thing we actually need to do is make sure that the rocket launcher itself is loaded. Okay, so the data variable is in here, and it may already be fully programmed. This may be the only thing we got to implement in there, which would be kind of boring, wouldn't it? I've already done all the code in the background, I just simply forgot I did it. So it doesn't matter where this goes in here, there's really no order of operation when it comes to uh, 
how this is handled. I think it's how you do true. I've actually not done bullions in uh in this I don't think. Should load. In theory. How does this actually work? So we get uh uh, of course, we need a JSON primitive. I think there's a JSON primitive loaded up here. So we're going to go look at the code real quick. And get as Boolean wrapper. So is Boolean, get as Boolean wrapper. If not, parse Boolean. Parse Boolean. Okay, so true is this, and it treats everything else as false. That is actually kind of cool. Um, that removes a lot of problems if somebody types in the wrong values and stuff. Uh, we could actually treat this as a string and we could allow a lot more data to be parsed in. Um, I think we can just put true there, but I have a feeling it, like you have to do it like this. We're going to do it this way and then we're going to see how that how that functions. Um, and then I need to check to see where this is used at. So if we do this... Okay, so... There is a check for is cited, site required to fire. So we're going to see how this is used. Yes, base method. Is cited, or okay, it's already programmed, so we're going to just test to see if it works. Um, and then uh, we'll see what else we're going to implement here. So we got to fix uh, the empty clip rendering. Um, I fixed this repeatedly and it keeps breaking. As you notice, when the RPG fired, it still acted like it had the tip on there. Uh, that needs to be adjusted so it disappears when you fire it. Uh, then we need to program the render for the rocket. Uh, we might do rocket smoke today. I don't know if we're going to get too deep into the entity effect system because in order to do the rocket smoke, we'll have to create an entity effect system, which means I may have to implement more elaborate JSON loaders and stuff. That may be something I, I do passively as I watch Netflix or something. Um, when you code, it's more preferable to, to be doing something that's slightly distracting but not fully distracting. Most people use music for this case where they listen to music. It's slightly distracting, but it's not distracting away from the work. It distracts you away from the world around you. And it helps you do what is called uh, getting in the zone. Now, yeah, while we're doing this, I want to check to see how the debug is working. Yeah, look at that nice debug. And look, it tells me what keys it's injecting. So an injected material and a render type, injected material, injected material. So material, by the way, is now an injection key, which is really useful because that means I don't have to uh, parse material anymore. Uh, I would have made name, I, name mod, and ID uh, parsable object, but I want these to be final so nobody can touch them. So they can't change them, they can't manipulate them. So we'll see if this works. If this doesn't work, I'm going to reload it because I think I might have not saved before I hit. Uh... So it's not firing? It fires aimed. Nice. At this point, I just got to play around with the rendering. Like the axis point is not exactly perfect. Um, Positioning is not exactly perfect. These are things I just got to toy with. Uh, just It's visual stuff that would just make the client happy. Um, and then on reload, I need to make it tilt up so it looks like you're actually reloading the thing. And then I got to do an animation for this too, but I'm not going to do this for the, the client's project. Um, he didn't even really care for models to start with. He just wanted something that functions. So he's getting something that functions. We went over the top and we made up models because uh, I needed to get my asset guy in the habit of actually making weapon models that are usable and very other, uh, other things. I'm actually hoping a couple of other people that uh, make assets for me will start to make weapons. I've actually been trying to ask a, quite a few of them to make things. Um, I got Grogger to make me a, a couple guns, handguns and stuff, but which we're, we plan to use for testing. But uh, I need things like machine guns, LMGs, SMGs, uh, anti-tank rifles, so like bigger stuff, things that are, have more complicated parts. But this works, so now we just got to figure out what is wrong with it. So. In my inventory, it is acting like it's got null on both the IDs. It's not supposed to do that. So something utterly failed with the uh, render S and render E keys. Because this is rendering gun empty. This is not. You know what? We're going to ditch this. We're going to grab a new one. So the new one, 
it renders empty. And look, it renders with my uh, up position. And it forces that up position so you can't fire it, by the way. And then we should get a reload. So it's going to render gun empty for both these. And this could just be an MBT tag issue, which is the reason why it's failing. Is it could just be some corrupted tag data. We've had this happen a few... Oh, no. It's uh, it's returning null on both of those. Um, and if we fire it... Oh, it's working now. Cool. <laughs> of course, we can't fire it that way. I may not need to fix that either. It's going to be like a really weird video where I'm like, I need to fix this stuff, and then we get 10 minutes, and it's like, oh, we don't need to fix a single thing. Resilience of code. Um, let's hit save and quit, and we're going to come back in, and we're going to see how it behaves now once it's been saved to MBT. Ah, it's broken now. Okay. Now, two or three... Two or three things have happened. Is either the data is actually null, or it's reloaded itself. Yeah, so it thinks it has ammo actually. So type is RPG, ammo is RPG ammo. Chambered round is RPG round, so it thinks it has ammo. Is it just not synchronizing properly? I mean, it is consuming the ammo, so we're not getting any duplication problems, so it's not that. Uh, but we're going to hit save and quit. And I'm going to make sure we get back in debug mode here in a second. Uh, we're going to read over the code real quick. So we got all this. We got do fire, chambered around, moving down here. Let me open this to make sure we have no exceptions being thrown. Yeah, no exceptions being thrown. We can see that the impact happened. It, it did so many iterations and stuff. Um, God, wow, look at look at that. Three. Th this is the reason why I have debug code for Optimus is that the explosives. That's 35 itera 000 iterations for a size of one, which means something borked, because the size of one should only iterate across five blocks. So I need to optimize that, and that code would probably run better. Um, hmm. Then we set the chamber around the null, and then we chamber the next round. Maybe the consume ammo check is not running properly. Of course, this is not functioning properly, so I gotta do find usage settings and implementing methods. This is what I want. So, Klimp instant item is a, a normal handgun clip. Klimp, this instance, is different. So this, this code looks like it's working properly. The only thing I can think of is we're just not saving. Yeah, actually, that might be the, the issue. Um, no, because we update any stack at the very end. So we're, we are saving. We, we're literally just going to have to do something like this, and we're just going to have to watch how the entire round goes from start to finish and make sure all the data is initializing and make sure it's synchronizing, and it's probably a synchronization issue. Look at this real quick. Get held item to stack. If these e items equal each other, 
then we set inventory slot content, detect instant changes, and we've updated gun stack. Actually, we're going to hit null here, because I think a couple videos ago I said I wanted to do this. Um, string name. Because I want to know what is updating the stack every time it's updated. And then, of course, I need to do if uh, engine.running is dev. So this is going to be debug code. And then we want to do engine.logger. That way we're not using print lines. Print lines are pretty ugly to use, especially after they introduce code to make it ugly intentionally. Uh, so this is unload weapon. And this is reload weapon. And this is chamber round. And this is do fire. That way we know exactly who's updating the stack when it's being updated. Um, Don't we have a consume ammo method here somewhere? I feel like I should be calling consume round. Surprisingly not a consume round method. Yeah, right here it is, consume ammo. Um, update ADD stack, consume ammo, and we're gonna make sure consume ammo gets called. Uh, and we're going to say consume shot. And what this will be is if chambered round does not equal null. And this will basically just be chambered round equals null. And yeah, that, that'll work. So we want to do consume shot here. And we want to replace our little null check that we have here with that. And that'll work. And we'll still do update stack down here, even though we technically update here and we update here. Um, technically, we don't need this, but I'm going to leave it there just because I don't really care to screw with it right now. Tester running, code gen ran. I need to actually start implementing the code generator more. Um, hopefully one of these videos here, either this week or the beginning of next week, you'll see me start to implement the code generator for ICBM. That'll be, well, actually I don't know if we'll do ICBM first. We need a, we need a solid test case mod. Uh, I'm considering basic industries might be a good test case to use. Um, especially considering I want to uh, work on my model system more. So right now with the block JSON system, we don't have a classic model loader. So we don't have something that works like the Techni models that, that just use blocks with textures on them. That's a system I want to work on because of the fact that I want to transition a lot of my blocky models to that because they just truly render faster. If you can render straight quads instead of loading up a model and then rendering that, it, it, you'll get a faster result. And it'll be more flexible too, because you won't have to worry about model files. Although in reality, what I'm doing is I'm making my own model format, but uh, that's not the point. Okay, so we are loaded up in debug. Yes, we're loaded in debug. So when we come in and we fire around, okay, so we're running through this. So, do we have a chambered round? We already have a chambered round. So we're gonna go in this anyways. Okay, so we're, we're not doing anything. Okay. So we get chambered round, it's good. 
we get our position so we get all this data this is we're not debugging this to be honest but we're gonna iterate through it anyways um, uh, this is just checking because we need the engine to do the packet handler this is doing all of our flame data smoke data this will be a transition to the effect system here later so we'll actually have an effect call and what you'll have to do in your weapon is define that you want this effect to play and it'll literally just be weapon smoke is what it'll be called for the effects you just go okay on fired render weapon smoke and then you'll be given the option to translate based on distance and stuff and it'll be, always be a relative position so by default you can just return zero and you'll get this default position which we're currently using uh, of course we do our gunfire here create, we're creating an entity uh, we have no items to drop so we don't drop any items uh, if we go to consume shot set null we've run our update uh, and then we come here update has ammo we call reload come out of this on left click and we take our reload which unsights our weapon this of course tells us how long it's going to reload do reload then ticks reload and we go like this and okay that doesn't do anything and then we're of course we're not sighted which then unsights our weapon okay I mean this all looks good but it still thinks we should be returning null so it still thinks we have ammo so our next check we need to do because we confirmed that the flow logic is good we now need to toy with the stack logic so this is our first spot where we are messing with stuff if we op open up our stack it still thinks we have a chambered round so some reason chambered round is not null in the tag uh, not quite sure how this happened we go down through Maybe the detect and send changes isn't working. Of course, this is going to do super render key and this is going to get null, is what this is going to get. Uh, so we hit play, of course, this is going to do the same thing over and over again. Uh, the next thing to check is our gun object version of this, which is down here somewhere. So right here it is. So this is where we want to check next, just to confirm what's going on. Okay, so we have our gun instance, and our gun instance thinks it has a round loaded too. Let me, yeah, this is just going to return the same value. So no matter what we do, it's the stack data is is not valid. Um, so we're going to do this, and we're going to hit play, go back here, and of course we haven't reloaded. So it's got to be the detect and send change is not running. I need, to, I need to look at something real quick. So, what? So, I, I don't think anybody else has understood what he just said. But this dragon for you. Um, it's got to be the detect and send change. That's, that's the only thing I can think of is the reason it's not updating because we are modifying our stack server side at least I think we are that that's the next thing to check because we we know client side the reason it's not working is because it, literally the MBT tags are not correct client side um, so the thought is it has to be a synchronization problem but is it a synchronization because we aren't updating the item on the server side either or is it something not updating the uh, instance at all or test test cases is what we're going to need um, so let's go we want this this would be a good spot to test so we're reloaded fire I guess we can follow it all the way through again
Okay. Of course, that isn't going to run, so we actually are going to remove the debug line there. Okay, so we know we have a chambered round. We know this all this code works. I'm going to put a dot there. That's a good spot to actually start testing from. Okay. So if you look at this, and we look at our item, our item is saving the chambered round, is what's happening. So if we go into the consume shot, we set chambered round to null, we go into here, our items are equal to each other, we do run detect everything, What does our stack look like? Our stack still has chambered rounds, so this is an issue where the server isn't saving properly. So now we got to figure out where. Okay, it's in our save method. So we're gonna hit play. It's got to be the save method. Save method, save method. I think I passed it already. Okay, there's load. Here's save. Okay. It could be load, or it could be save. It's more likely save. Right here it is, actually. Um, This is an example of where two stack should be saving with a new tag. So this is a bug in the super system. But it might be intentional, it might not be intentional. So what we're doing is we're doing item.copy and then we're saving that item and we're, we're unsaving from that item. Um, So when we call stack, we call save on the stack. When we save, where's save stack? Okay, save stack is here. Save stack does call new MBT tag. So what we need to do is stack dot set tag compound to null. So clear old data, clear old data, collect new data, add save tag if allowed, and only save data if we have data. So we just need to clear the data and this should fix itself. Um, so we don't need to do anything here. And this should be reloadable. So on next reload, it should fix itself. I don't need to test you. Okay, it fixed. So yeah, that's an example of where if you don't clean up after yourself when you're creating data, you, you, you have overflow. What we had is we were keeping old values into the MBT tag and it wasn't correcting itself. So we fixed that. And I'll call this end of a video right where we're at. And then I will think of something else to record here in a few minutes and then start up a new video. So I'll see you guys in a bit.